Hey guys, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Welcome back. Another great day today. Uh, fantastic movement in the market. Certainly can't complain. Before we jump on in, as always, underneath the video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any of the content that we put out. We put out a video pretty much every day that goes over all kinds of different stuff, from new day trading strategies to beginner's material to just example trades that we take throughout the day. Really cool way to kind of see how everything works and what we're all about. Along with that, underneath in the comments section, don't forget to put in some comments and questions or something that you want covered uh, because your comment might be the next video that we go over. Uh, and along with that, on the main page of SSFTG.com, if you haven't done so yet, I would love to see you in a three-day trial. They're free. It's a free three-day trial. You can see how we approach the markets and how we trade these. But without further ado, let's get into the fun stuff talking about impulse lights today. All right, all right, so impulse legs. Impulse legs, what am I talking about? Uh, so an impulse leg is nothing more than, kind of what it sounds like, a strong move in a singular direction. So in the event that we have a strong move, and typically when I say strong, just to kind of clarify, I like seeing back to back to back to back bull bars or back to back to back to back bear bars, something that proves to me that that side is a little bit impulsive, right? Now the second part of an impulse leg is that it needs to be relatively big and kind of stand out. Uh, so as an example, a really good impulse leg that just happened on the S&P uh, would be right here from the top of this bear move, right? The impulse where the seller started to where they ended was right there. So this leg down is the impulse leg. So just a couple more examples of different impulse legs. Right here would be an impulse leg up from the bottom to the top of that bear bar because that's where the impulse happened. None of this other stuff, just this one. Uh, if we go back a little bit further, there are plenty more today, that's for sure. This would be a really good impulse leg right here, right? From that high to that low. Not these lows, not those. That's not the impulse. The impulse happens here. Then you take that same measurement and you look for the repeat of patterns. Uh, and you're looking for those same traders, right? The assumption is that these are the same traders that have showed up before or maybe they're coming in fresh. Right, here's another really good example of an impulse leg down from the top to the bottom of the impulse. We can take this move over and we can measure up to see when it happens again. And you can see the response and why I love these areas so much. Because if you can start stacking these up on top of other areas like the lows of the range or the bottom of the channel or anything else in terms of a zone of interest and you have a completion of an impulse leg, that's a big deal, right? There's a lot of stuff that's stacking up there. Uh, so that's kind of the idea going into these impulse legs. It's, it's very reminiscent of a measured move, but it's not quite a measured move per se. It's more of a psychological measured move in that we're tracking specific traders. We're tracking the traders that have a big enough account to actually create these drives, right? These impulses. Uh, so as an example, another impulse from the bottom to top right there. Great impulse leg that we can use later on. And lo and behold, guess what? They stopped dead in their tracks when they were seen again. These same buyers came in again and they found resistance. That's something that happens very frequently. Now, another thing that you'll find with impulse legs is you'll have a situation where you'll have an impulse leg, let's say up, uh, but it's at the end of a trend and it doesn't really go anywhere and then it sort of falls apart. What happens very frequently is if you watch this midpoint and you draw that forward, right? So you're taking the entire anchor, the anchor bottom to anchor top, and you're looking at the 50% of that area. That's a 50% of the impulse leg. And if you take this same impulse leg, right, from top to bottom, and you draw that out here, when you realize that those traders are wrong, right, when they're out of the way, you'll find that this impulse leg, a lot of times, will show up again for those traders to get out of break even right about halfway back right? Uh, so very interesting zones to keep an eye on if you're finding one side of the, especially if one side of the trade is failing, then it becomes even more interesting. Uh, so a few times that you can use this, and one of my favorite ways to use impulse legs in general is to find and locate major targets, right? When I know where the market is wanting to head, then I've got a good bias in terms of a direction to trade in. Uh, but along with that, knowing where the big money is, the people who are moving the markets, the billion dollar hedge fund accounts, those are the ones that we want 
want to track, and they're the ones that typically cause those big, big moves like that. Actually, it's usually because of them that those big moves happen on stop runs, but regardless, we're tracking where that big flood came in, and we're looking to see where that flood comes in again. And that can give you some very, very useful information. Something to definitely take a look at and add to your tool belt if you haven't already. Just the impulse legs, right? Watch the impulse legs. Right now, setting up on the S&P as we speak, we've got the impulse leg down here. And now you can see bear bar, bear bar, bear bar, bear bar, bear bar. No break, just straight down. I'm immediately thinking impulse leg target 3105. And if we start seeing a reason to go long down here, there might be a viable reason to go long down there too if something else lines up with it bottom of a channel, structure low, etc. So just an example on impulse legs and why I like them so much and why I use them constantly through the day. Um, really, really useful information that you can get from them. So hopefully you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. Uh, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Until the next one though, enjoy, rest up, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.